Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Eloisa Ramos, and I am here with my friend Connie and my daughter Sonia. And today we are studying Chapter mm -hmm. Eight, uh, the journey back, and we left off on Section Three, the Holy Encounter. Okay, all right. So Paragraph One: Glory to God in the highest, and to you because he has so willed it. Ask and it shall be given you, because it has already been given. Ask for light and learn that you are light. If you want understanding and enlightenment, you will learn it because your decision to learn it is the decision to listen to the teacher who knows of light and can therefore teach it, teach it to you. There is no limit on your learning because there is no limit on your mind. There is no limit on his teaching because he was created to teach. Understanding his function perfectly, he fulfills it perfectly because that is his joy and yours. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see. So this is um, really emphasizing the will of God. So the, the, it's glory to God in the highest and to you because he has so willed it. So even if we don't perceive ourselves as uh, with God or in the kingdom with God, um, his will is not separate from us and his will is that which is truth and reality and there's basically nothing else so everything else is not if it's not the will of god it's an illusion it's a dream um and so it says, ask and it shall be given you because it has already been given. So we have been given everything. So we are everything because we are still as God created us and not separate from God. But because we believe we are separate, we ask, <laughs> we ask for things <laughs> because we have, because we forget that we have everything. And so um, that's why three says, asks for light and learn that you are light. You see, so everything that we ask for, the receiving is really the awareness that we are already that because we are already everything. We have not lost anything. Um, so if you want understanding and enlightenment, you will learn it because your decision to learn it is the decision to listen to the teacher who knows of light. And so that's the Holy Spirit, and that's in our mind. So we have that with us, and it's a matter of making the decision that that's what we want to learn, um, and only that. Because uh, we, we get stuck when we have a split... Um, desires or split wanting or sp not sp split valuing okay because that's where the belief goes to it goes to what we value um and so if we believe in separation well then um that's where the um learning goes to we we take on the ego as our teacher and and the ego knows nothing <laughs> so we we basically are asking for confusion um and the holy spirit is a teacher who knows of light and can therefore teach it to i to us to you and light is just another word for truth um uh, let's see which is which is basically everything truth is everything um because it's knowledge so there is no limit to your learning because there is no limit on your mind uh, so the mind was created in knowledge with knowledge as knowledge as the son of god um, and there is no limit to that um, 
and let's see. And so there is no limit to the teachings of the Holy Spirit because um, that's his function. I'm trying to remember what the Course says about that once learning is complete, then there is no function for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so, and it's tied to joy. So to understand his function, and I think we were talking a little bit about learning, Sonia, if I remember correctly, and how that is joyful. Um, and I'm trying to remember how we said that if we're not a happy learner, oh, it was in what we were reading, I think, the previous section, that we don't just, it's not just that our learning is um, is impeded when we choose the ego, but, but it's that we actually lose the knowledge. We we forget it. So it's as if we had lost it, not that we have really lost it, but it, the belief in separation is the experience of uh, believing we are incomplete and not whole and that God is separate from us. Um, so it's really an experience of loss. And that's why there's no joy there. Um, so it's a loss of joy. Okay. Anything there before we go on? No. Okay, number two. To fulfill the will of God perfectly is the only joy and peace that can be fully known because it is the only function that can be fully experienced. When this is accomplished, then there is no other experience. Yet the wish for other experience will block its accomplishment because God's will cannot be forced upon you being an experience of total willingness. The Holy Spirit understands how to teach this, but you do not. That is why you need him and why God gave him to you. Only his teaching will release your will to God's, uniting it with his power and glory and establishing them as yours. You share them as God shares them because this is the natural outcome of their being. Okay, anything Sonia you wanna say there? Um, I think, I really like line three, because to me, what it's saying is that I have to be willing to be wrong <laughs> about everything that I, I think I know. <laughs> uh -huh. um, because it's interesting that it says that God's will cannot be forced upon you being an experience of total willingness. Mm -hmm. So it's an experience. Um I mean, I think I'll let you clarify that, but that's just what I'm getting from that. Yes. So our valuing is is total in the sense that we no longer value anything that the ego can offer us. And, and it's also referring to the imprisoned will in the previous section when we read uh, the difference between imprisonment and freedom. So in, in line six, it says only his teaching will release your will to God's. So we can only truly will with God when we choose the ego and value what the world and the ego can offer us uh, as, as a belief in separation, you know, specialness, etc. Um, we're actually imprisoning our will because we're limiting it. Um, so only by uniting our will or recognizing that our will is one with God, God do we truly co-create with God. Otherwise, it's all a miscreation um, because, because we are coming from a place of fear and not love. So, um, so it is an experience of total willingness because we have valued correctly. Um, and this and this is uniting it with his power and glory and establishing them as yours. So there's oneness there. Um, 
there's a recognition that we're not separate from God. Um, number seven, you share them as God shares them. Uh, yeah. So because this is the natural outcome of their being. And I think that Jesus realized this seven fully, line seven fully. And that's why he uh, was, um, what's the word? In truth all the time. <laughs> um, and could share that light and could perform miracles, you know, and um, could raise the dead. Um, in the resurrection proved that, um, that, that ultimately he was not a body. He was as God created him, um, spirit eternal. So, uh, let's see. And then line one, it says to fulfill the will of God perfectly is the only joy and peace that can be fully known. Um, and then it says, um, because it is the only function that can be fully experienced. And I would say that that, that experience um, is what we would call the experience of a miracle because our function, our only function here is to forgive. And so it's through the forgiveness that we come to recognize that we are one self, one creation one son of God and that that's the what brings us peace because we recognize unity and, and we recognize there's nothing to fear um, in unity and so and I remember I don't remember which section it was but that is true perception that's the condition peace is a condition for knowledge um, so let's see so number two, when this is accomplished, then there is no other experience. So um, when we accomplish the, you could say, when we accept the atonement here, because then we recognize we're just one son, um, then, the, then that is, um, uh, then there can be no other experience because when you think about experiences, okay, they're very personal and unique and, and in a way, you know, for, for our ego, that's what makes us a person, a personality, an individual self. Um, you know, we talk about, oh, well, you know, when I was, you know, six, this is what happened to me, you know, and that's my experience. And then someone else will say, oh, yeah, I had a similar experience, but they're not going to say I had the same experience. <laughs> so it's always, um, they're always, you know, pieces of what we think makes up the separate self. Um, okay. Mm. Okay, so number three, Connie. The will of the Father and of the Son are one by their extension. Their extension is the result of their oneness, holding their unity together by extending their joint will. This is perfect creation by the perfectly created in union with the perfect creator. The father must give fatherhood to his son because his own fatherhood must be extended outward. You who belong in God have the holy function of extending his fatherhood by placing no limits upon it. Let the Holy Spirit teach you how to do this for you can know what it means only of God himself. Okay. Okay, so so again it's distinguishing between what is extension um as the will as one will um as creation and what the course calls making which is uh making alone um as a separate self believing that we are an ego or a body. And the, the distinction is that 
the making is is a miscreation and the creating with God as one will is true creation. Um, so let's see. It's an extend and it's it's an extended outward um, and it's a sharing. So there's no loss involved. There's just expansion, extension, increase. Uh, whereas for the ego, um, the making is an exchange or a gain and a loss. So there's always a transaction um, in making, you know, even in make, you talk about, oh, making friends or in, um, let's see, um, uh, making a party, making, um, uh, making a chair, making anything that we make, we have to take from one. To make a chair, you have to take, you know, something from that tree. You have to slice it into pieces and then put it together in this other form. And now the, the form is changed, so we don't call it a tree anymore. We call it a different thing. Um, but with but not with creation. Creation has no form. So there's no difference. There's no change. So there's no separation. So the father and the son are really the same. You see, because there's no uh, transformation <laughs> like we think of in the world in, in terms of inventing things and making things, that kind of a thing. Um, okay. So number four, let's see. When you meet anyone, remember it is a holy encounter. And as you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. And as you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this, for in him, you will find yourself or lose yourself. Whenever two sons of God meet, they are given another chance at salvation. Do not leave anyone without giving salvation to him and receiving it yourself. For I am always there with you in remembrance of you. Okay, so, so it follows then that if we are one creation, one son of God, um, and we are extensions of God, then when we meet someone, there we are, God. <laughs> and so it is a holy encounter with God, with ourself, with oneness, with what we are in truth. So as I see him, I will see myself. And, and as I judge him, I will judge myself. So it's the giving and receiving. There's no, um, there's no separation. Um, as you treat him, you will treat yourself. Um, as you think of him, you will think of yourself. So, um, and that, that is really true. Um, we, as a separated self, can split the mind. So we think that, oh no, you're different from me. And so I'm not like you at all, okay? Um, but, but what I'm doing is I am projecting what I don't wanna be like, okay? Because, because I have judged myself that way already. <laughs> So then I project it because I don't want to see myself that way and see it as you. Um, and I'm not really seeing you. I'm seeing my own projection of what I have rejected in myself, which is really not a, a it's, I haven't gotten rid of it. I'm actually, I've actually repressed it. And then the unconscious mind projects it. And then I can think that it's not me but it is me <laughs> uh, i'm just using the unconscious to try to fool myself okay um, so anyway um there's no way around it um 
whenever the sons of God meet, they are given another chance at salvation. So, so here is our chance to recognize sameness, to recognize our brother as our brother, because we are created by the same creator. And therefore, to recognize we are completely equal, irregardless of the situation, circumstances, upbringings, backgrounds, nationalities, age, you know, sexual orientation, none of that is uh, of a of a real um that's none of that is part of our real essential nature uh, as spirit so we can just see past all of that and um and recognize the um the true love that everyone is um and you know if we if we could all do that we would have a truly loving world i mean it it would be heaven basically um so, so number seven, do not leave anyone without giving salvation to him and receiving it yourself. For I am always there with you in remembrance of you. <laughs> That's interesting because a lot of times uh, we hear that said, um, like in communion in a church, uh, in, do this in remembrance of me. But here it's saying in remembrance of you. <laughs> so we're actually... <laughs> Um, we're actually practicing the, uh, the forgiveness of our function to have a holy experience so that we can remember the truth of what we are. Um, so, okay, number five. The goal of the curriculum, regardless of the teacher you choose, is know thyself. There is nothing else to seek. Everyone is looking for himself and for the power and glory he thinks he has lost. Whenever you are with anyone, you have another opportunity to find them. Your power and glory are in him because they are yours. The ego tries to find them in yourself alone because it does not know where to look. The Holy Spirit teaches you that if you look only at yourself, you cannot find yourself because that is not what you are. Whenever you are with a brother, you are learning what you are because you are teaching what you are. He will respond either with pain or with joy, depending on which teacher you are following. He will be imprisoned or released according to your decision and so will you. Never forget your responsibility to him because it is your responsibility to yourself. Give him his place in the kingdom and you will have yours. <laughs> you wanna say something around that, Sonia? Oh no, it just, it reminds me of like, personal situations that came up but also I find myself when I'm like watching tv or like especially like reality tv shows like like the bachelorette for example um because I was just thinking of the I know it says when you meet someone but couldn't you technically also say that like watching people on tv is also meeting someone sure because if it yeah because if you're still like because I find myself judging a lot, like what they do, you know, in the shows and like how crazy it is, you know. Um, but that's also an opportunity to find myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I'm really every single time I judge them or what they do or anything. <laughs> Connie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So what to do with that? I mean, it would feel like there's absolutely no point in watching anything if you can't. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you mean it's, it's not going to be entertaining? <laughs> right. It be 
gaining if you just look at everything neutrally be like oh well why bother <laughs> well I I kind of get what you're saying though Connie because I know like when I go <laughs> over so like every week I go over and I watch the bachelorette or the bachelor with my cousin <laughs> and my and my uh, oh, brother <laughs> and now we have somebody else that's watching it with us um but every week I always notice because I, I do catch myself sometimes like really like judging them and and my brother and you know everyone else it's it's like a judging them and what they do is considered like joining like it's considered like having a good time you know like commentating on like everything that they do you know trying to figure out why this person is doing this you know how could they do that to her you know all this stuff um so that's what makes it fun right like oh, to I watch like shows that. we're joining in the fun of it all yeah yeah but we're still <laughs> judging them hardcore <laughs> so we're not really we're not really joining though is that right mom Yes. Yeah, so what happens is, is that the <laughs> the way that we have um, the way that the ego has turned joining. OK, it's turned it into um, into, you know, you know how it used to be kind of a click in junior high or high school where you, the whole idea of being in your little group was to oh, oh to gossip basically and to look at oh so and so look at what she's wearing and to just like comment and criticize and to like and and so then you have your own little group that is like um that uh that gives itself permission to attack okay but but not feel bad because everybody because you know you're all joining in it so it's not um you can't take responsibility for it do you see what i'm saying so so yeah so it's a way to be unkind but feel exonerated from the guilt like oh i don't have to feel guilty because everybody's doing it do you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, so it's a way to try to have it both ways. You know, it's a, it's a way to, um, to, to get kind of that though, the excitement of the, um, of the attack going, of the judgment, you know, of, you know, I'm better than you are kind of a thing. But at the same time, feel like it's it's not bad it's okay everybody else does it so yeah. so it's a it's a it's, it's kind of tricky it is kind of tricky because um there are patterns that we learn growing up and I remember I remember um I remember that pattern being part of my relationship with my husband early on in our marriage <laughs> And because, you know, after a gathering, you come home and then you're like, oh, yeah. And, and you know, so-and-so said that. Oh, yeah. And where did you hear what so-and-so said? And, you know, oh, so you're comparing notes about what happened at the party, you know. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah. And did you hear this? And then, So it's all like gossip, you know. And it's all like, it's all like, it's it's almost like, I want to say that there's kind of like a little bit of shame there but it's part of your special relationship you know that you have going because the, because it's kind of like you know our own little secret kind of a thing um so you know i'm not gonna it it you know it's kind of like okay well someone else comes into the group and it's like oh hi guys what are you talking about oh nothing nothing you know <laughs> we're perfectly innocent we're not up to nothing <laughs> so so it, it it has that kind of characteristics of kind of still being a child and engaging in in what you know your parents have told you you should not do but you're doing anyway and it's fun because you're getting away with it and it's not just you so if you get in trouble you know there's less of a chance of you getting in trouble 
So there's a little bit of that kind of uh, Calvin and Hobbes kind of kid, you know, that gets away with doing all these things uh, because he's just a kid, you know, and kids do kid things and they, they don't have to take, you know, responsibility for it kind of a thing. Um, but what, but what this is saying is that, um, it's, it's saying is, look, giving is receiving. Okay. So yes, go ahead and do that. But just remember that you're going to have experiences where that happens to you. So don't be surprised if you catch someone else talking about you behind your back. Okay. Because they will, <laughs> because that's what we do. So, I mean, it's obviously it's different with entertainment, right? I mean, they're, <laughs> they're not going to be talking. They're, they can't be talking about you. And in fact, they already know that's the whole point of the show. The whole point of the show is to get you talking about them. It's to get you involved and engaged, you know, because that's what keeps you watching the show. And that's what ratings are, you know, so it's um, so I mean, with entertainment, you're not really you're not really um, what's the word. Um, there's there's no one there that's actually going to uh, necessarily care. OK, <laughs> that you're saying all these things about them, um, like like maybe in high school, someone might. So, so, um, so it's not that there's anything wrong with it is that you just want to look at it and at the need that you have for doing that. You know, why, why, why do I find this entertaining? And there's, um, there's a section somewhere where, where it talks about how we laugh at the unworthiness of our brother. Um, I can't quite remember how, how it talks about it, but that's, part of part of our own sense of unworthiness you know um because right. we don't recognize like oh yeah i would do stupid things like that too <laughs> you know i want to say oh i would never do that <laughs> okay well <laughs> uh that's not true we're all the same you know and we want to deny that sameness you know it's, that's why it's so scandalous it's like oh my god how, couldn't she see that right through him you know <laughs> well there's been times when we can't see through people we've you know we've gotten uh what's the word um scammed you know um so so we're always really just talking about ourselves ultimately so if you really there's you know if you look at entertainment you can ju you can use it for um, for looking at how you perceive yourself, because it's going to be just a mirror, and of course that takes the fun out of it. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to, because it's still pretty fun to make to see your own um, ego think thoughts. They're actually really hilarious. I I can. You know, I come across some ego thoughts and I just start cracking up, you know, because it's like, oh, my God, you know, how could I even think this, you know? So it's um, it, it's different depending on whether you are laughing because you can genuinely see that it it makes no sense at all or whether you're laughing because it's actually a way to put someone down and make yourself feel better like oh yeah i'm you know i'm not that stupid kind of a thing um so we kind of have to look at you know whether the entertainment is making fun at people or whether we are just really laughing at our own ego you know which yeah, which is which is a joke. I mean, the whole tiny mad idea is that it's not so. It's not the problem. Is not really the ego. It's the fact that it's a joke, and we took it seriously. We forgot to laugh. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, that explained it pretty good. I guess I was just my main question was that I can't make a difference between what I see on a screen like a person on a screen 
doing something versus somebody I meet on the street, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. See, look at line eight. Whenever you are with, an, well, this says whenever you are with a brother, you are learning what you are because you are teaching what you are. Um, um, so you could say that about characters on the screen too, because a lot of times, you know, when we look at our brothers, we see them as characters. We don't really see them as our brothers anyway. We just see them as another character in a screen. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that's that's why the the course says that we make an ego of our brother and that's what we see. We see that image mm -hmm. that we've made of them. So there's no real difference between the, the screen and the going to the grocery store I know that's, that's why I but you know it is actually helpful because I do like I do realize when I'm doing that because I do I do do that I judge these people these characters on the screen all the time but it's only until recently that I've been able to actually be like wait a minute like if I'm judging them for that like I'm just judging myself so I don't think I I really want to do that anymore it's just hard because I always forget that there's no difference yeah so yeah so when we what we're doing is we're practicing so remember this course is a it's a it's a, it's a retraining of our mind mm -hmm. because when we're like you're watching entertainment you're literally just practice judging you're practicing judging 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 and it's fun mm -hmm. okay so when you come to the grocery store, you, the habit is going to be to just judge. So it's going to it's going to take a lot more work <laughs> yeah. to undo that training because you really don't want to be doing that with someone that you meet at the grocery store. Right. OK, so 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 here, number nine uh, or eight, whenever you are with a brother, you're learning OK, what you are, OK, because you're teaching what you are, because that's how we reinforce what we believe we are is by the way that we treat someone else. So, um, and he will respond, respond either with pain or with joy, depending on which teaching you are following. So if I can see my brother at the grocery store completely equal without, you know, separation, without difference, I am going to be, I'm going to be offering him compassion and love rather than, you know, cursing him for cutting in line, you know, uh, so, um, because they didn't even see me, okay, and they should have seen me, okay, but they didn't, so, so things like that, so, so it's all about learning what I am, and I teach myself what I am, the way that I treat my brothers, um, because, because in the mind, even though we split the mind, that judgment is still there uh, of how we've judged them. And then the next time that the similar situation comes up and we do similar thing, that judgment is going to come up to judge us because it's already there. We didn't get rid of that judgment. It stays there. Um, uh, let's see. And so our experience will be one of either pain or joy, depending on which teacher we are following. And in the long run, we get tired. We get really tired of pain and suffering. And we become more and more motivated uh, to find the way that will bring us only joy. Ultimately, that's really the motivating factor that I have found in my own experience. Um, when I really recognize that it's in my hands, it's in my power, my mind is powerful and it is bringing to me experiences either of pain or of joy. And which ones do I want? Do I really, really, really want experiences of pain? Um, they're not fun, you know? Um, maybe um, if it's not me, I might think it's fun but it, it is me so there's no way it cannot be me um 
it, you know, so even like when we hear about the war in Ukraine, we can't help but feel for people that are there, you know, because we really are just one mind, one self. So, um, okay, let's see. So never forget your responsibility to him because it is your responsibility to yourself. Um, and so we are either giving ourselves a place in the kingdom or we're excluding ourselves from the kingdom because we're not recognizing our true equality. Um, and therefore, um, we want to make exceptions, you know, and make some more worthy than others of being in the kingdom. And so we miss, we don't treat everyone equally. We, you know, um. Or we treat some people better than others. It's the same. Whether you go to the negative or you go to the positive, it's the same thing. Anyway. Okay. Uh, number six. <clears throat> the kingdom cannot be found alone. And you, who are the kingdom, cannot find yourself alone. To achieve the goal of the curriculum, then, you cannot listen to the ego whose purpose is to defeat its own goal. The ego does not know this because it does not know anything. <clears throat> but you can know it and you will know it if you are willing to look at what the ego would make of you. This is your responsibility because once you have really looked at it, you will accept the atonement for yourself. What other choice could you make? Having made this choice, you will understand why you once believed that when you met someone else, you thought he was someone else. And every holy encounter in which you enter fully will teach you this is not so. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, so the kingdom cannot be found alone because anything that we do alone, we do as a separated belief in ego, as a body. Um, and so the, the, we're not going to find the kingdom that way because the, the, the condition for um, knowledge is unity, is the is inner peace, and it's the recognition that there is no separation. It's oneness. So, so clearly, we are uh, having to release all the blocks that would get in the way of uh, true perception, which is recognizing oneness. Um, and so to number two, to achieve that goal, you cannot listen to the ego. The ego is always going to uh, focus on division, on conflict, on fear, on what's wrong, you know, what could be improved, uh, what could be more better, uh, on lack, on scarcity. Um, and its own pur purpose defeats its own goal <laughs> in it, and it has to, because remember what it said above is that the purpose for each thought system is to tell you what you are. And and the ego does not know what we are. So, of course, it has to fail at its own purpose. And that's why we're just confused. Okay. So, um, and bec see the three, the ego does not know this because it does not know anything. So... Uh, but you can know it and you will know it if you're willing to look at what the ego would make of you. So if we look at the error, if we look at the beliefs that we have about what we think we are, a body and ego, a separate, um, you know, a separate self. Um, if we really look at that, we find that all of those are images and. Um, and those images cannot reflect wholeness. They only represent a very specific role that we play maybe or a very specific 
a judgment that we made about ourselves compared to others. Um, and, um, and it's our responsibility to look at what we made. Um, okay, because that's how we see that we are wrong. And you were saying, Sonia, how we have to be okay with being wrong here. Um, because this is how we come to accept and, and recognize that there is no separation. <laughs> okay, we have to see that we're wrong. Uh, um, and that, um, and that if I judge, I will be judged. And that if I, um, you know, if I focus on, you know, the shape of your body, when I look in the mirror, I'm going to focus on the shape of my body. <laughs> it's the same thing. So whatever I do to you, I'm going to do to myself. So, um, and so, uh, because, because giving is receiving. So it's always in my best interest to, um, to recognize my true loving nature and to choose love. It's always in my best interest to choose love. And that's why I choose to forgive. And that's why I practice forgiveness. Um, you know, it's um, it's for my highest good. Um, so let's see. Having made this choice, you will understand, understand why you once believed that, that you were separate uh, when you met someone. Because you thought he was someone else. That's the whole belief in separation is we believe in differences and that um, that other people are not us, even though they're all created by the same creator. Um, it's, a, it's a really interesting thing, you know, but it stays, um, it stays stuck like that because we don't look at it. So if, you know, I can be a very devout um, Christian and I can say, <clears throat> Yes, you know, God created me and God is loving. And But then when my neighbor does something that I don't like, you know, I'm like, like, you know, I can start cursing the guy and hate the guy. Okay. And I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. God created him too, right? Uh, well, yeah, but he's not like me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, how is he not like you? I mean, did he change himself is he no longer the way god created him well yeah you know he does stuff that he shouldn't be doing you know he's he's evil okay or he's sinful or or whatever so so now i'm judging i'm judging that um that god's creation it can can change uh and therefore they must have power that is greater than god's to be able to uh <clears throat> you know undo the the power that created them and make it into something different okay well none of that makes any sense but we don't we don't look at the error. We don't take it that far back to really look at the nonsense that that we're believing. Um, so anyway, um, so that's why we do want to look at the error. And that's what releases us and our brother. Um, because we can, we can see when we bring those parts together, instead of keeping them separate, that they don't make any sense and that they're not true. And so we are wrong and we let it go. We, we um, give it to the Holy Spirit to heal our mind so that we can see that there is no real difference. Um, so let's see. Yes, yeah, so releasing you and your brother from every imprisoning thought any part of the sonship holds. Um, and that's how all our wrong decisions are undone completely um, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, number nine, wrong decisions have no power because they are not true. Um, so the imprisonment they seem to produce is no more true than they are. Um, 
Okay, I think I skipped down to the, the next paragraph. Is that true? What, was I quoting from seven and were we on six? Uh, I, I think I so. Think, yeah, we were on six. Yeah, so just, yeah we so. were on six. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so the holy encounter is teaching us the truth, okay, that um, my brother is one with me. And, and that holy encounter will uh, really motivate me to see my brother um, lovingly, um, because that's how I will see myself. And that's how I want to be seen. So, okay, number seven. Uh, my turn. Okay, so you can encounter only part of yourself because you are part of God. Who is everything? His power and glory are everywhere and you cannot be excluded from them. The ego teaches that your strength is in you alone. The Holy Spirit teaches that all strength is in God and therefore in you. God wills no one suffer. He does not will anyone to suffer for a wrong decision, including you. That is why he has given you the meaning for undo the means for undoing it. Through his power and glory, all your wrong decisions are undone completely, releasing you and your brother from every imprisoning thought any part of the sonship holds. Wrong decisions have no power because they are not true. The imprisonment they seem to produce is no more true than they are. Okay. Um, okay. So this is again talking about what line six, uh, set, paragraph six said in line one, the kingdom cannot be found alone. So here's just saying it in different words. It's saying you can't, you can encounter only part of yourself Okay, because you are a part of God. So by trying to see ourselves separate from God, we can only see ourselves as incomplete, as a part. Okay, so the only way to really see ourselves as whole and complete is to recognize that we are a part of God, who is everything, who is wholeness, and who created all of creation. Um and and we share in that so his power and glory are everywhere and they're not our power and glory okay the ego will try to take credit and say oh no it's your power and glory you took it from god it's yours now you're separate okay um and now you're excluded from the kingdom but so what you got your own power and you got your own glory okay that's what the ego would say okay and 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 this is saying no that's not true all power and glory comes from god okay and you cannot cut that off and still have glory and power okay so um and that's why we cannot be excluded from them okay because we are still life created by God, that is power and glory. And um, the ego teaches that your strength is in you alone. So that's why we become very limited and vulnerable when we believe we're a body, because now we think that, you know, we're gonna have to take extra vitamins and we're gonna have to, you know, maybe go work out and really build up that body because that's our strength alone. And we really rely on our own um, cleverness, the ego cleverness, or our own um, physical strength to, to try to manage and do everything in life. And it becomes really, really exhausting. Um, so the Holy Spirit teaches that all strength is in God and therefore in you. So my strength is not mine alone. It comes from God. And because it does come from God, it is inexhaustible. So I have access to inexhaustible, infinite strength in God. I don't have to try to survive alone in the world because I am not alone. <laughs> I am always um, part of God and therefore part of the strength of God. So um, 
God wills no one suffer. Okay, this is a really big one. Um, at least in my family, anyway. Um, so uh, my mother really believed that suffering was how you became, uh, what's the word, purified and worthy of heaven. Okay, so there was an element of of the belief that suffering was actually good. Okay, um, and and what it says here is that that's not the will of God. God does not will for us to suffer because if you think of of it. What kind of God would God be if he actually willed for us to suffer? That would not be loving. Okay, so so then we would have to try to kind of, how do we, how do we think of God then? He's loving, but he's not loving, um, you know, because because he he's okay with me suffering. He sends me suffering. Well, that's going to make it really hard for me to love him, okay, uh, and not be afraid of him. Um, so number six, he does not will anyone to suffer for a wrong decision, including you. Okay, so that kind of undoes the belief in sin there. Because, yes, we make wrong decisions. We choose the ego all the time. And uh, following that guidance... We do things that are not loving, okay? We can do things that are cruel and attacking and uh, and wrong. And so, um, but but what it says is is that is that 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 does not mean that we are deserving of suffering, okay? And for many of us, we really really believe that if we do something bad, hurtful, or whatever that then we are deserving of suffering, of punishment. And and we believe then that, you know, maybe if I get sick, that that's what I get, that that's my punishment, you know, or or um, or maybe I, I go bankrupt and I lose my business. OK, well, maybe I think, OK, well, I must have I'm, I must have deserved that God is punishing me because I you know, I did something wrong. So uh, there's a lot of beliefs around this idea that uh, that God wills for us to suffer. Okay. And it's not true because God is loving. So he can't, a loving will cannot possibly desire suffering. Um, and, and so that's what the miracle is. And that's what healing is. It's the undoing of all effects from our wrong decisions because because remember they have no power um seven that is why he has given you the means for undoing it that's the miracle through his power in and and actually it's the forgiveness the function of forgiving that is choosing the miracle um so through his power and glory all your wrong decisions are undone completely that's healing, releasing you and your brother from every imprisoning thought any part of the sonship holds. So that means we are not subject um, to the effects from any, any fear thoughts, any imprisoning thoughts of the ego in the sonship. Um, wrong decisions have no power because they are not true we cannot truly decide for the ego because the ego never happened it's not real how can you decide for something that never happened okay you only think you're deciding for something because you think it happened and that's the ego the belief in separation but since it never happened uh, what decision did we make well, there was nothing there to decide for uh, because it's not true. So the imprisonment they seem to produce is no more true than they are. And that's the truth that sets us free from all the symptoms that our wrong decisions would, you know, bring up um, because they're miscreations of our mind. 
and they're healed when the truth, uh, the light shines through. Um, number eight. Is it your turn, Sonia? I don't remember, but I think I so. Can... Okay. Power and glory belong to God alone. So do you. God gives whatever belongs to him because he gives of himself and everything belongs to him. Giving of yourself is the function he gave you. Fulfilling it perfectly will let you remember what you have of him. And by this, you will remember also what you are in him. You cannot be powerless to do this because this is your power. Glory is God's gift to you because that is what he is. See this glory everywhere to remember what you are. Mm -hmm. Anything, Sonny? Was that the sh just sharing? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so power and glory belong to God alone. Okay, so that's really clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't let the ego say and tell you and, and then think it's true that um, that there's power in um, holding the position of the presidency in a country or that there's power in, um, let's see, in, you know, exercising and eating healthy. OK, <laughs> um, power and glory only come from God. OK, when we give power and glory to the things of the world, we are believing in magic. That's the level confuse, confusion. OK, and and that's what produces all of our sickness all of our physical symptoms okay so our mind is powerful okay because our mind also belongs to god <laughs> okay <laughs> god shares his power and his glory and that's why we have a mind that is powerful and glorious okay but we can't take ownership of that we can't actually usurp power from god Okay, that's a belief. The, the belief is that we can, um, that we have power to attack God, and therefore we have usurped His throne, His position, and um, now we are our own self, um, separate from God. Okay, well then we would be completely separate from that power too. And, and so where would we get the power to usurp the power from God? <laughs> and if the only power that we have is comes from God, why would that power be greater than the power of God so that we have the power to attack God? It would have to be an even draw because the power is the same. Okay. So, so, so anyway. We cannot possess power and glory. Okay. They're not things. Okay. <laughs> this is my cell phone. Okay. <laughs> and I can possess this <laughs> uh, because it's a limited thing. You know, it's a limited thing. Okay. Well, the power and glory of God are not a limited thing. So you cannot own them. You cannot possess them. Um, so, um, and, and, I don't need to. I don't need to because God gives, number three, God gives whatever belongs to him. Okay. Because he gives of himself. And so, so he gives everything because everything belongs to him. So why do I want to take anything from God? He's giving me everything. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to take anything from God. I have everything. Okay, so giving of yourself is the function he gave you. So if I give of myself and I have been given everything, I'm just giving God to you, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because that's myself, that's the same, it's the same. 
So fulfilling it perfectly will let you remember what you have of him. It will let me remember that I have everything. And because I have everything, I can share everything because it's come, it's all coming from God. So there's no limit. There's no loss. Um, and by this, you will remember also what you are in him. Um, and so And so what we are in him is the same, okay? There's just, there's, that's just it. <laughs> there's nothing else. So, so you cannot be powerless to do this because this is your power. Um, so sharing is extending, is power, is what we are because that is what creation is. That's what God gives us as power, as creation, as love, as um, light, as truth. You can, you know, use all those words, but it's the same thing. So glory is God's gift to you because that is what he is. Um, and he gives everything that he is. So see this glory everywhere to remember what you are. So to, re to see the glory of God everywhere, is to have that reflected back as a knowing, a recognition of what we are. Um, so it's almost, um, let's see. Yeah, it's to be able to see God in everyone, you know, in every living thing. Um, and, and then 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 the mind is reflecting back to itself the truth um and you know then i i think the next step is just taken by god which is knowledge so then there's no perception after that um okay um okay so any questions Con yeah no connie um, oh yeah, I just yeah. looked up. I just looked up the word glory, and you know, it has some beautiful things like, um, yeah, magnificence or great beauty, and a thing that is uh, beautiful. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, the splendor and bliss of heaven. Mm. Just yeah, just, you know, just glory is yeah. I just wanted yeah. to see some other specific terms that, you know, help to have that. Yes. <laughs> so the, the word divine, right? Mm -hmm. The word divine. Magnificence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seeing the magnificence in all and everything and everybody. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even perfection. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you can take a, a walk yeah. in nature mm -hmm. and just tune into this natural perfection. Mm -hmm. right where there's there's nothing out of place it's all just harmony and you know <laughs> um, unity and yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay did you have a question too Sonia no no okay okay so th so that's I think that's a good explanation Connie uh, when you we're talking about glory of the holy encounter um mm. you know um yeah mm. yeah and you know i can i can think of a couple times i would say uh, that experience of the holy encounter i would say that that's you could describe it that way you could describe it um as not seeing uh, it's just seeing the essential nature of the intention of of that love that was there coming in that interaction um so that there was this um it was just a sharing that's all it was it was a sharing of the that true nature of what we are because it went it went past all of the judgments and it went past all of the differences, you know, like 
the gender differences, the religious differences, or the socioeconomic differences, or even the the form, you know, the the human versus the squirrel, you know, it went past all of those differences. Um, so, yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay. So that's the holy encounter. And next time, the gifts of freedom, the gift of freedom. That'll be the next section. Okay. So that's it for today. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And until next time.